Today on Who Are You, one of the great AFL players of the modern era, a six-time All-Australian and a loyal, and it might be argued, long-suffering servant of the Fremantle Dockers Football Club, but both he and I would like to think that much of the suffering is over. But football is just part of the Matthew Pavlik story, and I think he's more than just a footballer. Good morning. Good morning, Jeff. How are you? Who are you? I'm, well, I'm, I'm sure we're going to find out. I'm a son, a brother, a husband, a recent father, um, a uni student, and an AFL athlete. Dad, Steve, was an electrician. Mum, Jan, is a nurse, and you grew up in Kidman Park in Adelaide. Can you describe some of your memories of that experience? Yeah, Kidman Park is uh, from the working class suburbs of, of Adelaide, um, the beach side suburbs, so different to, to what we see here in Perth. Obviously, the western suburbs is the more affluent and and well-heeled uh, uh, community. Uh, yeah, my childhood was unremarkable. It was normal. It was idyllic. It was exactly what any child would really ask for. Um, plenty of love from mum and dad. A lot of good times um, and fond memories. There's you and there is your sister, Jessica. Yep. Who you've described as the really smart one. Yeah, well, Jess got the brains of the family. There's there's no doubting that. And, and the looks and all the things that <laughs> I guess come with, uh, come with that. Between you and for just a short time, there is a boy called Jason. Yeah. Can you tell me about Jason and the impact Jason had on your family? Well, it was something that... Um, I didn't really understand until I was much older um, and probably by virtue of mum and dad dealing with them th themselves and amongst the broader family and, and maybe not exposing me to the trauma and the tragedy that, that occurred. Um, so I was born in uh, Dece December th 31st, 81, and, and mum and dad uh, fell pregnant with their second child um, throughout 83, so a couple of years later. And mum's pregnancy was perfect, it was going along fine and she got uh, full term, so went to, to nine months and unfortunately tragedy struck right at the, the last minute and they lost, uh, they lost Jason at, at birth essentially and had to deal with that, that whole process. And, um, when did mum and dad decide that the kids could know what had happened? Oh, look, I can't remember the exact moment or the exact age. I must have been oh, of of ten or eleven or twelve, or of some comprehension of you know what it what it would have happened. And um, so, how does a ten year old react to that news? Um, unbelievably surprised because, albeit that there was a gap of four years between Jess and I, I just thought that was normal, and you know, mum and dad love me and and they love Jess and they had no you know there was no obvious signs at all growing up that that was the case but clearly underneath all of that they were dealing with an enormous amount of trauma and tragedy at the time and and maybe the you know, as a result there was you know some heaped love and and even height and affection towards me which I didn't feel at the time but maybe upon reflection and and how you observe other parents and whatnot it might make sense and I was actually speaking to mum and dad about this because I hadn't spoken to anyone about this publicly. It's not in the public arena and it didn't really occur to me to to ask them because I think it's a part of us and we're obviously honouring Jason and his extremely short life by speaking about him and, and, and whatnot. But I had to ask mum and dad, look, are you guys comfortable with speaking about this? And, and they were like, yeah, completely, we think it's the right thing and um, we're happy to, you know, obviously it's over 28 years ago, so. Yeah. You're a new dad. And, yeah. And I wonder, all these years on, whether you have another reaction to what that experience must have been like. Oh, um, having only 11 weeks ago, 12 weeks ago, have gone through the process of, of uh, being a father and becoming a father and seeing birth and the nine months of pregnancy and, and trying to fall pregnant and, and all the bits and pieces that go along with it. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty overwhelming, to be frank. It tells you what a parent's life is <laughs> yeah. in that kids will never quite know what mum and dad's world was all about. 100% on, spot on. And it was not until I knew my mum and dad loved me, but it wasn't until Harper was born. And, you know, it's not an immediate reaction. Or, or for me, it wasn't when Harper was born. It was probably three or four hours later. I was like, wow, look at this little girl. <laughs> look at this thing that Lauren and I have made. That I realised 
your mum and dad seriously love you. And it was that appreciation when she was born and sort of taking you through, you know, Jason's um, experience and, and, and what they had to deal with. Yeah, the appreciation levels go through the roof. Were you a nice kid? Uh, yeah. Yep. I, I think, think I was, yeah. I was reading a quote from your dad in which he said, he hasn't changed at all, which is great. He's obviously matured into a man now, but his behaviours are still the same. So what were you like as a kid? I was a kid who loved having fun, loved being outdoors, um, loved playing sport, tried his hardest in the classroom, um, you know, had leadership roles and prefect sort of roles throughout school, loved his mates, uh, was really loyal to the people um, he he liked and, and really loyal to the people that, that liked me back and um, had fun around the neighbourhood, you know, sort of never any, any trouble, but, you know, just the normal stuff any other teenager would do growing up. That word loyal comes back again and again as being, well, you've been very loyal to the football club, yeah. but indicative of, of who you are. Was that instilled in you, that loyalty mattered? Yeah, I think it must have been. I mean, there is an enormous sense of, um, in my family, particularly dad's side of the family, of of how important family is and, you know, gatherings, all having fun and, you know, messing around together. And um, dad played footy and, and his mm. uncles play, and my uncles played footy. And so that that mateship of going out to to battle and then afterwards, you know, celebrating the, the win or commiserating the loss. And, um, you know, my uh, dad's parents used to have all of their footy mates around and, you know, their families around. It was all about how important the family was and, and that little community that you built around your immediate family. But it would seem that there's also a sense of responsibility that goes with that and a leadership role that goes with that. Now, I can look at you now and say, well, that that's the Matthew Pavlich I see in front of me, but I, I sense that that's always been there. Yeah, and I, I just think that's, you know, I look up to my dad um, more than anyone else that I look up to in the world and, and see, yeah, he was my childhood idol and I loved footy and other sports and whatnot and, and appreciated what guys did on the field but um, you know the values that dad has uh, and the way he's gone about his life is exactly how I would like to you know if someone's reading out at my funeral um, the eulogy and you know sort of some of the words that would describe dad I hopefully I've lived up to those to this point and continue to do so and um, I would suggest that might be the nicest compliment your father will ever hear <laughs> or any father would hear, is a son that says, I really would like to live my life the way you did. Yeah, and look, and, and we're different people. So it's it's probably even greater a compliment in that he's an electrician by trade who's found himself into um, human resources, essentially, um, and can pick up any sort of nook and cranny and put it together in two seconds. I'm completely hopeless with that type of stuff. And... Um, and, you know, I've been to university. Dad didn't do that. So we're, we're very different people. And yet the broader values that he lives and has lived, um, I think, are an enormous, um, enormous path and enormous thing that I can sort of live up to.